Grape juice is super fun and easy to make. Today I'll be showing you how to make this juice here. A maxi grape juice with cute flounces for sleeves. To make this juice we'll be using McCool's M7745 in view B. This dress has a lot of great techniques that we can learn from, such as making narrow hems, how to attach flounces, and how to use sheer fabrics. I'm confident even beginners can make this dress from this tutorial, so let's get started! Today I'll be showing you how to make view B of M7745. Check the back of the envelope for the materials you'll need for your size. For the sheer overlay, you'll need at least 3 meters of sheer fabrics like chiffon, georgette, satin or silk. I'm using a silky satin. You'll need at least 2.6 meters of solid underlining fabric. I'm using a light poplin fabric, but you can also use other light linings in cotton. If your overlay is opaque, then you won't need this fabric. You'll need at least 0.6 meters of matching lining. I'm using Ponji. You can use the same fabric for the lining and underlining if you like. I'm using different fabrics so you can see the difference. To tie the dress, we'll be using 1.9 meters of ribbon, about 1.5 centimeters wide. I bought a grow grain ribbon because they're generally quite tough. You'll need all the usual sewing supplies such as matching thread, a sewing machine, tailor's chalk, pins, an iron and ironing board. To mark the darts today, I'll be using tailor's tacking thread and needle. This is best for sheer and delicate fabrics. I'll also be using carbon paper and a tracing wheel to copy the dart for the lining. To sew sheer fabrics like this, you'll need to use sharp needles. Refer to the tab at the top of the pattern envelope for the sizing chart. Choose your size based on your bust measurement as the waist can be adjusted with the ribbon. This pattern also comes with multiple cup sizes. The first page of the pattern shows you how to measure your bust and upper bust to determine your size. Use this guide to choose piece 1 for A and B cup, piece 2 for C cup, and piece 3 for D cup. Please don't use your normal bra size, these sizes aren't necessarily the same. For view B of this pattern, you'll need to cut out the bodice front piece for your cup size in pieces 4 to 7, 12 and 13. To cut out the pattern, you need to follow the line indicated as your size all the way around the outside of the pattern. Don't cut along any of the cutting lines inside of the pattern piece. Don't cut along the dart markings, which are the triangles on the inside of the bodice front piece. I recommend checking out my supplementary video on how to make a paper model of the bodice of this dress. When you're cutting the fabric, you need to keep in mind that the fabric on the outside of the dress is called the contrast, and the main fabric is the second layer or the underlining. We will also have a layer of lining in the bust. Check the instruction sheet for the cutting layouts. Choose your layout based on your size and the width of your fabric. I'll be cutting out the underlining first. For this, you'll need to use your bodice front piece and pieces 4, 5, 12 and 13. I'm using the first cutting layout because I'm a size 12 and my fabric is 120cm wide. Lay out your fabric on the table on a single layer. Lay piece 12 next to the selvage. We need to align the grain line of this fabric with the selvage. We do this by making sure that the distance between the selvage and the grain line is the same down the length of the pattern piece. You need to do this for all pattern pieces with a grain line arrow. Pin the rest of the pattern to the fabric and cut around the outside of the pattern with shears. When you see the triangle markings on the edge of the pattern, you need to also make a triangle on the fabric. These are called notches and they help us match the seams on the pieces. 
Move the fabric so you can cut the other selvage. Fold the fabric in half and must be wide enough so that you can fit piece 4 on top. You also need to make sure that the selvage is the same distance to the fold for at least 30 centimeters. The side of piece 4 which has the square arrow needs to be placed directly on top of the fold. This will be the center back of the piece and you must not cut along this side of the piece. Pin the pattern to the fabric and cut it out. Unpin the fabric and go back to a single layer. Place piece 2 next. Pin and cut this pattern out. Pin piece 12 again upside down and cut it out. Move back to the other salvage. Pin and cut out piece 2 again upside down in the space left over. Move the fabric along and pin and cut out piece 13 next to the salvage. Piece 13 needs to be cut out again on the other side of the salvage, but this time upside down. At the end of the fabric, fold over enough fabric to lay piece 5 on top and make sure that the selvage is parallel to the fold. Pin and cut out piece 5. That's it for the underlining, time to cut out the pretty sheer fabric. You'll need to cut out pattern pieces 3, 4, 6, 7, 12 and 13. My fabric is wide so I'll be cutting out layout 2. I'm also going to try and pattern match the waistline on the front of this dress, which is piece 2 and 12 in my case, so I'll be deviating from the layout slightly. I'll be making a full video on how to pattern match soon, so stay tuned! Fold your fabric in half widthwise and pin the salvages together. Piece 7 and 4 needs to be placed on the fold. Place the sides with the rectangle arrow marking on the fold and don't cut along these sides. Place the bodice front piece beside these pieces and align it with the fold of the fabric. Cut out all pieces that you've pinned so far. Now I'm going to prepare piece 2 for pattern matching the waist seam. I'm only going to align the left side of the dress because this is the side that shows when you wear it. Take the left side of the bodice front over to your iron and ironing board. Turn up the bottom edge of this piece by 1.5cm on the wrong side of the fabric and press into place. This piece is on an angle, so it can't be completely aligned. So I suggest marking a spot that you want to align on the right side of the fabric with Taylor's chalk. Grab pattern piece 13 and mark 1.5cm from the top edge. Join these markings to create a line which represents the seam line. Back to cutting the fabric. Unfold the fabric so that you're working with one layer. We'll be working next to the right salvage or wherever you can find a repeat in the fabric design. Place piece 2 on the fabric so that it's covering the exact same design. Grab the pattern for piece 13 and make sure that it can fit in the space underneath piece 2. Now we will lay piece 13 on top of the fabric so that the marking you drew at 1.5cm is directly on top of the fold of piece 2. This seam isn't perpendicular to the selvage, so I suggest placing the corners together on the right hand side and walking the pattern piece on top of the fold of piece 2. We do this by pressing down on the pattern with a finger and re-angling the pattern. Do this every few centimeters until you reach the marking you made on piece 2. Pin piece 13 to the fabric directly under this marking. You can now unpin piece 2. 
Go ahead and align the green line of piece 13 with the selvage and finish pinning the rest of the pattern to the fabric. Cut this piece out. Move to the other side of the selvage. Lay piece 12 next to the opposite selvage and pin. You should just have enough space to pin piece 6. Align it with the selvage or the grain line of piece 12. Cut these pieces out. Place piece 13 upside down next to the selvage. Pin and cut this piece out. Pin piece 12 on the opposite selvage upside down. You should have just enough space left over to pin and cut out piece 6 again. This time, remember to cut it out upside down. Only the bodice of this dress is lined, so we'll be cutting out the bodice front and back, which is piece 2 and 4 for me. Fold your lining in half. Place piece 2 next to the selvage and pin. Place piece 4 on top of the fold and pin. Cut these pieces out. Let's start work on the bodice. For the front of the bodice, you should have three pairs of copies, two of each of the overlay, underlining and lining. You'll have one copy each of the bodice back in these fabrics. What you need to do is lay the wrong side of the contrast fabric on top of the wrong side of the underlining and pin it into place. Do the same for piece two. We'll now baste all the way around the raw edge of these pieces and we'll treat it as a single piece. To baste, we simply increase the stitch length to the max and we'll sew at 1cm seam allowance. Do this for both of the bodice front and back. We'll now transfer the dart markings on the bodice front onto the fabric. My fabric is quite delicate, so I'll be using the tacking thread method. Here's how to do it. Place the bodice front pieces wrong sides together. Place the pattern piece on top and pin into place. Thread your needle double with a basting thread if you have it. You don't need to knot the end in this case. Use your needle to make a small stitch on the dart line and pull the thread through until there's only an inch or so left. Make another stitch about 1cm over from the last stitch. Leave a big loop about 5cm between stitches. Make sure that the needle is going through all layers of the fabric. Flip the fabric over to make sure. Keep sewing all the way along the dart line. Once you're done, cut all the loops in half so that you have long stalks of thread hanging out of your fabric. Gently lift the pattern off of the fabric. Now gently separate the two pieces of fabric so that you can see the stitches. Cut the stitches in half. You should have about 1.5cm of thread on each piece of the fabric. Do this for both sides of the dart. The lines of the dart are represented by the bottoms of the thread. I like to take a ruler and tailor's chalk and draw on top of the threads to better see the dart lines. Do this for both darts on the bodice front. Before you start sewing, you might find it useful to copy off all the circle and square markings onto the wrong side of the fabric. 
To do this, I simply pin the pattern to the fabric next to each of the markings. Fold the pattern in half along the marking. Use Taylor's chalk to draw from the marking to the edge of the fabric beside the fold of the pattern. Flip the pattern over to copy the markings onto the other copy of the bodice front. On to sewing the dart. We need to baste on the inside of the dart to hold the layers together. Sew it about 1cm from the dart line on the inside of the triangle. Fold the dart in half so that the wrong side of the fabric is on the outside. Push a needle through both of the dart lines to make sure that they line up, then pin into place. Take the dart over to the sewing machine. Straight stitch on top of the dart line, starting from the raw edge to the tip of the dart. When you reach the tip of the dart, pull out the fabric from the machine. Cut the thread so that it leaves a long tail. Pull out all of the tacking threads. Knot the threads together by hand. Do this for both darts on the bodice front. Trim the excess fabric on the dart to about 1cm seam allowance. Iron the seam allowance for the dart downwards when you get a chance. Lastly, we'll finish the raw edge. If you don't have an overlocker, then I suggest switching your machine to a zigzag stitch and sewing on top of the raw edge. Go ahead and grab the ribbon that you bought. Cut this ribbon into 4 pieces of 46cm. Take the left hand copy of the bodice front. This side of the bodice will be tied first when you wear the dress. Copy the small circle marking from the pattern on the bottom right hand corner onto the right side of the fabric. I already copied this marking onto the wrong side of my fabric, so I'll use a pin to mark where the marking is, then make the marking on the right side with Taylor's chalk. Place one of the pieces of the ribbon on top of the circle marking so that the end of the ribbon meets the raw edge of the bodice. Pin into place. Sew over the ribbon a few times at 1cm to hold it in place. Grab piece 4 which is the bodice back. Lay it on top of the table with the right side facing up. Place both of the bodice front pieces on top so that the right sides of the fabric are facing together. Pin together by the side seam and match the double notch. Sew these pieces together at 1.5cm. Finish the raw edges of both of these seams by zigzagging along the edge. We need to sew an easing stitch along the bottom raw edge of the bodice to help it fit on top of the skirt. Easing stitches are just like gathering stitches. Change your stitch length to as long as possible on the straight stitch and pull some thread out of the bobbin and needle before and after you sew. Sew the easing stitch at 1cm. Be careful not to cut off this thread later as you work on the bodice. The frill is made from two pieces of piece 6, which are attached to the front of this dress, and one of piece 7, which is attached to the back. Lay out piece 6 and pin the pattern to the right side of the fabric. To start, we need to copy off the small circle marking on the inside of the frill. Do this for both copies of piece 6. Lay piece 7 on the table and pin the pattern to one half. 
copy off the big circle marking on the right side of the fabric. Flip the pen and piece over and copy the circle marking onto the other half of piece 7. At your sewing machine, sew over the chalk marking a few times at 1.3 centimeters. This reinforces the fabric and prevents it from ripping in the future. Use your scissors to cut along the chalk marking until you reach the stitching you just made. Don't cut into the seam. Lay out piece 7 on your table. Place both copies of piece 6 on the top, matching the straight edge of the single notch. The right sides must be together. Pin into place. Sew both copies of piece 6 to 7 at 1.5 cm. I'm going to finish the raw edge of the frill seams with a turned under finish. For this finish, we need to fold under half of the seam allowance on each side of the raw edges. Sew on top of the fold at about 2mm on both sides of the seam. Trim off all the seam allowance underneath, then you'll have a nice neat finish. Sew at 1.3 cm around the rest of the inside of the flounce. We do this to reinforce the flounce for when we attach it to the bodice. We now need to make a narrow hem from slit to slit over the top of the seam you just made. This hem will make the armhole of the flounce. Narrow hems are quite laborious to sew by hand, so I suggest either using a rolled hem setting on your overlocker or a narrow hemming foot on your sewing machine. The narrow hemming foot is my favourite, but it can be a bit finicky. Use these tips alongside the instructions that came with the foot. Here is how to use it. Sew around the area that needs to be narrow hemmed at 1cm. Trim off all the seam allowance until you're left with a few millimetres. Load your narrow hemming foot onto the sewing machine and make sure that you're on a centre straight stitch. Take the start of your hem and sew for about 3mm and leave long tails of thread before and after you sew. We use these threads to help load the start of the fabric into the machine. I like to pre-roll my narrow hem before I load it into the narrow hemming foot. Do this by folding over the raw edge by a scant few millimetres. Roll this hem over again by another few millimetres so that the seam can't be seen anymore and stick a pin into the end. Load the start of the narrow hem into the wedge at the back of the foot. Use the threads to help you position it. Let down the presser foot and pull out the pin. In front of the foot, fold over the raw edge by a few millimetres on the wrong side. Pull the fabric over the top of the first prong. Start sewing slowly. Feed the folded fabric into the curler and pull the thread at the back of the foot to help you push it forward. Keep this up as you sew and try to feed an even amount of fabric into the machine. Now I'll be doing all the narrow hems on this dress by hand because it's an important skill. Once again, sew from slit to slit at about 1 cm. Trim the seam allowance around the frill to just a few millimetres. Using your iron, fold over the seam you just made on the wrong side of the frill. The seam should be just a few millimetres from the fold. Iron this fold flat. Fold the edge over again by 5mm so that the raw edge is covered. Iron this hem and pin it into place. Sew on top of the hem close to the edge. 
Doing this hides away the raw edge and creates a narrow seam. This seam is very curved, so you might have to make a very narrow hem and stretch it as you sew. Now we'll make a narrow hem around all of the outside of the flounce. This time I suggest using an easing stitch at 1cm. Don't forget, you need to change your stitch length to the maximum and pull out some thread before and after you sew. Trim off almost all of the seam allowance. Once again, I'm going to make this narrow hem by hand. Fold over the easing stitch by just a few millimeters on the wrong side and iron. Fold again by another few millimeters and iron. Gently pull one of the easing stitches to help you tighten the hem at the end of the flounce. So on top of the fold of the hem all the way around the outside of the flounce. Remember how we did that seam on the inside of the flounce? Grab your scissors and cut slits into the seam allowance. Make sure you don't cut through the seam. Go ahead and grab your copy of piece 4. We need to copy off the big circle marking on the top right corner of this piece onto the right side. This marks the start of the sleeves and the corresponding circle marking is on the back of the flounce. Copy off the circle marking at the bottom corner of the bodice on the right side of the fabric. This marking represents where the end of the flounce needs to be attached. Do this for both sides of the bodice front. You also need to copy off the circle marking for the front of the armhole. This is the small circle marking next to the side seam marked for view A and B. Do this for both sides of the bodice as well. Time to attach the flounce to the bodice. The slits in the seam allowance will help you increase the width of the frill to match the bodice. Place the end of the frill on top of the big circle marking at the bottom of the bodice front. Start pinning the frill to the raw edge of the bodice. Match the point in the frill to the point at the top of the bodice. Then pin towards the side seam of the bodice. Pin the slit in the frill on top of the small circle marking for the armhole. Pin the other slit to the other small circle marking. Pin the frill across the bodice back until you reach the other marking for the armhole. Repeat this process to pin the rest of the frill to the other side of the bodice. Sew the frill to the bodice at 1cm to hold it in place. Don't worry, the seam will be sewn into the seam allowance later. Once again, grab your pattern and copy off the small circle markings at the bottom of the bodice front. Do this for both sides. Lay a ribbon on top of each of the markings that you just made and match the raw edges. Sew into place at 1 cm. We'll only be lining the bodice of this dress. Transfer the dart markings onto the bodice front. This time I'll be using the tracing wheel and carbon paper method. Place the carbon paper on the table with the die side facing up. Place the wrong side of the bodice lining on top. Pin the pen and piece on top of the fabric. Use a tracing wheel to firmly roll over the top of the dart marking. The dart marking is perfectly made on the wrong side of the fabric. Do this for both of the bodice front lining pieces. Sew the dart the same as for the main fabric. Pin the darts together just like you did with the main fabric. Sew down the dart, but don't backstitch on top of the tip. Pull out some of the thread from the machine and hand knot the threads together. Trim the seam allowance to about 1cm and finish the raw edge. 
We also need to sew a ribbon onto the lining fabric. Lay the left side of the lining on the table. This is the side with the dart on the right when it's facing the right way up. Just like before, copy off the small circle marking on the right hand bottom corner with tailor's chalk. Pin the ribbon to the right side of the lining and sew over it a few times at 1cm to hold it in place. Pin both of the bodice front pieces to the bodice back piece at the side seam. Make sure that the right sides are together and you match the double notch. Sew these pieces together at 1.5cm. Trim the seam allowance to about half and finish the raw edge of the lining separately. Take the lining over to the ironing board. Fold up the bottom edge of the lining by about 1.5cm on the wrong side. Press the fold of your iron. Trim the raw edge by about half a centimetre and finish the raw edge with a zigzag stitch. Now we'll sew the straps, which are made from piece 5. Fold the strap in half widthwise and pin the raw edges together. Do this for both strap pieces. Sew the strap with a 1.5cm seam allowance from the raw edge for both straps. Trim the seam allowance to a scant 5mm. Finish the raw edges of the seam. To turn the strap the right way out, you'll need a big needle and some thread. Thread your needle and push it into the seam at the end of the strap. Tie a knot at the end with the threads. Push the needle through the inside of the strap and through the other end. Try to roll the end of the strap with the knot inside. Gently pull the needle as you do this. Keep pulling the needle and pull the strap the right side out. Do this for both straps. The straps will be attached to the bodice back on top of the square markings. Grab the pattern for this piece and copy the square marking for your size onto the fabric with tailor's chalk. Use the corner to position the pattern. Place one end of the strap directly on top of this chalk marking with the raw edge of the strap together with the raw edge of the back piece. Sew over the strap a few times at 1cm. Do this for both straps. The other end of the strap will be attached between the big and small circle markings at the top of the bodice front. Pin the pattern to the fabric and copy off these circle markings of Taylor's chalk. I already made these markings onto the wrong side of the fabric. When we attach the lining to the bodice, we must not sew between these markings, so that later we can insert the straps here. Now we can sew the lining to the bodice. Place the bodice on top of the lining with the right sides together. Make sure that the flounce won't be caught in the seam, so try and push the flounce away from the raw edges. We need to align both of the side seams for the bodice and the lining. Here's how to do it. Line up the two side seams to be aligned and place them right sides together. Use your tailor's chalks to make a marking at 1.5cm from the raw edge of the seam. Fold along one of the layers at this marking. Move around the top layer so that the seams are aligned. Pin the layers together. Sew over the seams at 1.5cm without backstitching. Do this for both seams. 
to check your work, open up to the right side and make sure that the seams are aligned. We can now sew the seam normally and it will align perfectly. Pin the rest of the lining to the bodice. As you pin, make sure that you aren't catching the flounce. The seam will start on top of the small circle marking at the bottom of the bodice front. In other words, at the end of the frill. Pin the folded edge of the lining to this point. Pin the bodice back and the other side of the bodice front as well. Remember that we need to stop and start sewing on top of the circle markings at the top of the bodice and leave space for the straps. On your sewing machine, start sewing at 1.5cm on top of the fold of the lining. Stop sewing between the opening for the straps and restart sewing on the other marking. Then sew over the bodice back. Stop and start sewing once again on top of the space for the strap. Sew to the bottom edge of the bodice. Sew over the seam at about 1.3cm to reinforce it. Trim the seam allowance to about half. Cut small triangles into the seam allowance up to the reinforcing seam. Make sure that you don't cut into the seam. The reinforcing seam prevents the bodice from fraying. Cut off the excess fabric around the corners at the bodice back. Finish the raw edge of the seam with a zigzag stitch. Make sure that you stop and start sewing at the space for the straps. Moving on to sewing the skirt. The skirt for this dress is made from two copies of piece 12 and 13, which are the front and back pieces. You should have these cut out in both the sheer fabric and the underlining. Take both of piece 12 and pin them right sides together down the centre back seam, which is the side with the triple notch. Sew together at one and a half centimeters. Do this for both the sheer and the underlining. Grab both copies of piece 13. Pin the length of these pieces right sides together to the skirt back that you've just sewn so far. Match the single notch on both these pieces to make sure that you're sewing the right size together. Sew together at one and a half centimeters. Do this for both copies of piece 13. Once you're done, zigzag stitch on top of the raw edges of each seam individually. Once again, we need to sew a narrow 1.5cm hem down both sides of the skirt and the underlining. We'll do this just like with the frill. Sew at 1cm from the raw edge down both sides of the skirt. Sew at about 1cm down both of the skirt side seams. Trim off almost all of the seam allowance. On your ironing board, fold up the raw edge on the wrong side so you can just see the seam you made and press if you iron. Roll this fold approximately 5mm over and iron again. 
pin into place. The hem of the skirt also needs a narrow hem. Repeat the same process to make a narrow hem. The hem for the underskirt is just a normal hem. Fold up the raw edge of the bottom by 2.5cm on the wrong side and iron. Now fold under the raw edge so that the hem is now 1.6cm wide. Try to tuck away the hem at the corners to make them hidden from the right side. Sew at 1.5cm on top of the hem all the way around the skirt. We'll now attach the two skirts together so they can be sewn to the bodice. Lay the skirt underlining on top of the table with the wrong side facing up. Lay the sheer skirt on top so that the wrong sides are together. Match the seams and pin together at the top edge. Sew together at 1cm to hold them in place. The dress is finally coming together. Lay your skirt on top of the table with the right sides facing up. Place the raw edge of the bodice on top and make sure that the right sides are together. The lining must not be sewn into the seam, so push it away so you're just working with the sheer fabric and the underlining. Before we make the waist seam, we need to align the side seams. Just like before, align the side seams at 1.5cm and pin. Sew over the seam at 1.5cm to see how it aligns. Pin the rest of the waist seam. Match the corners of the skirt and the bodice. As you can see, the bodice is slightly wider than the skirt, so we'll need to use the easing stitch we sewed a long time ago to shorten it slightly to match. Grab one of the strings at the end and gently pull it as you hold the fabric with your other hand. The fabric will begin to gather as you pull. Use your fingers to move the gathers along the bottom of the bodice. Do this until the bodice front and back are very slightly gathered and even with the skirt. Pin the bodice to the skirt. Sew together at 1.5cm. Trim the seam allowance to about half and trim off all the seam allowance at the corners. Sew the raw edge with a zigzag stitch. When you get a chance, iron the seam allowance towards the bodice. We'll cover the seam allowance with the lining soon. We're on the last stretch for making this dress. Now that the skirt has been attached, you can try on the dress and finish up the straps. Bring the straps over your shoulders and pin them to the top point of the bodice front. Make sure that the straps aren't twisted over your shoulders and that the dress sits snugly on you. 
Take the juice off and lay it on the table. Use your tailor's chalk to make a marking on the strap at the point where it needs to enter the dress. Push the edge of the strap into the holes that you left at the top of the bodice. You can use a needle to help you do this. It needs to be pushed in far enough so that the chalk marking will be at the seam line. You need to angle the strap slightly towards the armhole side of the bodice. Pin the strap into place. Sew over the strap and the top of the bodice front. If you're happy with how it looks, then trim off all the seam allowance around the point. Do this for both straps. Finish this with a zigzag stitch. To give the bodice a crisp edge, you need to understitch the lining for as far as possible. To do this, we need to pin the seam allowance towards the lining side for the entire seam where the lining is attached. On your sewing machine, you need to sew at about 5mm from the seam on the lining side. Do this for as far as you can around the points and curves of the bodice. Be careful not to catch other points of the dress in this seam because it's a tight fit at the top of the bodice. Finally, we can sew the lining down onto the dress and cover the waist seam. Place the fold of the lining on top of the waist seam and pin into place. Match the side seams. Make sure that the seam allowance of the waist is enclosed in the lining. Since this dress is underlined, we can completely cover the waist seam. We'll hand sew the lining directly onto the underlining of the skirt, but not onto the sheer fabric. Note that the lining is also too wide for the skirt and needs to be eased in. I can ease the lining in fine with hand stitching, but you can also sew an easing stitch at 1cm. Thread your needle with a long strand. Fold the strand in half and knot the end. Push your needle into the edge of the waist seam where it will be hidden. Move the lining on top of this area and make a few vertical stitches to neaten the corner. I'll be using a lattice stitch to sew the lining down onto the underlining of the skirt. Here's how to do it. To make the first stitch, you need to push the needle into the underlining for about half a centimetre just underneath the waist seam. Before you pull the needle through, check that the needle hasn't pierced the sheer fabric. Pull the needle through. Now we can make the stitch into the fold of the lining. You need to insert the needle into the lining at the same spot that you exited the underlining. Make a stitch length of about half a centimetre. Repeat the next stitch into the underlining. This method creates small vertical stitches which are nearly invisible. Sew the entire bodice lining down onto the skirt underlining. The ends of the ribbon still need to be finished so that they won't unravel in the future. I suggest rolling over the ends of the ribbon a few times until the raw edges can't be seen anymore. Sew over the top of the roll near the fold. Do this for all four ends of the ribbons. Congrats, your frilly wrap dress is ready to wear. In this video, I showed you how to make a fancy wrap dress with flounces for sleeves. We learn how to make narrow hems, how to underline a sheer fabric, and how to make ties for the wrap dress. Please let me know what you think of this dress down in the comments. Please like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it and would like to see more in the future. See you later! In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a pop... A pop top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, focus. Mr. Staff Warriors. Do do.